Stay here in an episode of Chord Play. This is the chords of Tenacious D. And of course, we're going to be talking about the legendary comedic rock duo. And Tenacious D formed in LA in 1994, which wasn't too long after Jack Black made friends with people like David Cross and Bob Odenkirk, also Dave Grohl. And both Jack Black and Kyle Gass were part of a comedic troupe out in LA, which had something to do with Tim Robbins. I think he's like a co owner or founder. But it's really interesting because not too long after that, they actually had their first. Uh, kind of hit with the HBO special, you know, Tenacious D. And if you haven't seen the Tenacious D, you know, show that was on HBO back in the 90s, it was like 97 to 2000, I think, is when it ran. Hilarious show. And that was my introduction to Tenacious D. And I was watching HBO one night, and I thought, what's this Tenacious D? And I watched it. I was laughing. I was almost falling off the couch laughing. And I thought, whoever made this is actually a musician, or they played in bands or something, because... You know, the jokes were razor sharp. They were just hitting, you know, perfectly where I thought, wow, this is for musicians, big time. And there's definitely been a lot of attention surrounding Jack Black. I mean, he's a bona fide Hollywood star. But then there's not really as much discussion about Kyle, Kyle Gass. And he's also fronting the band Trainwreck and the Kyle Gass Band. And obviously also is a member of Tenacious D. And Kyle's a really interesting guitarist, and this episode's going to you know, feature a lot of basic chords and, you know, sus chords and, and kind of simple things, but some really interesting, you know, chord progressions and non-diatonic chord progressions and stuff, you know, hiding in his playing style. And even though I know uh, there were some interviews with him and Jack Black, and they admitted this in interviews back in the day, Kyle Gass did not go to Juilliard at all. That was all just a made-up lie or a, a joke. But here's an image kind of explaining the whole Juilliard thing. The music in this episode is going to be pulled from four different Tenacious D albums, and they've released four albums, so we're going to hit a little bit from each of their releases. And definitely their debut, you know, over 20 years ago, just exploded. And then they followed that with the Pick of Destiny and the Pick of Destiny movie, which I love that movie. I think it's hilarious. But I've talked to a lot of people that were like, eh, but no, it's, it's hilarious. It's funny. And that brings up the whole, you know, does humor belong in music, which of course came from Frank Zappa. And I think Frank would agree with me if he could, that yes, as long as it's funny, then humor belongs in music. If it's not funny, then get it out of there. But if it's actually funny, then yeah, humor belongs in music. Look at Frank Zappa or Weird Al or Spinal Tap. You know, here we're looking at Tenacious D. And also later in the episode, I'm actually going to do a kind of a demo of this Pick of Destiny. And I've had this kind of hiding in a box for a long time. I actually forgot about it. And when I was putting this episode together, I was like, don't I have the Pick of Destiny? And sure enough, I do. So I'm pretty excited to actually open this and kind of do a little demo during this lesson. So here we go. With the opening, that's of course Wonder Boy from the self-titled album, and I was using the TC Electronic Data Looper to kind of help recreate both guitar parts. And the first guitar, which is picking through chords, is doing this. <laughs> And that first chord is just D major, and then you're also doing that pull off, you know, from D sus4, you know, grabbing that G note, you know, which is really common on guitar. So that's kind of the picking pattern there. And then it switches, and this is non diatonic, you know, progression, but we're moving to B flat, and he's holding this part of B flat major. But he's also pulling off, um, you know, that F to the high E open. You know? So that's an implied B flat sharp 11 with that high E open, like that. And that's a really interesting chord progression, hearing D major kind of shift to that implied B flat sharp 11. You know, really interesting. The 
second guitar comes in with this really melodic and kind of dreamlike, you know, uh, guitar part, and he's really just playing dyads. So I'm not really sure if Kyle played both these guitar parts in the studio, or, you know, if Jack played the chord part and then Kyle's playing the lead part here. I assume it's all Kyle, but I don't honestly know. Jack probably did play some of this stuff in the studio. I know live they shared, you know, guitar parts. But uh, anyway, the, the kind of melodic guitar part's doing this. <laughs> dyads and thirds and stuff so this D major you know little partial like dyad is moving to another D major you know this D and F sharp is moving to F sharp and A right there and then to match that B flat sharp 11 just move that up a half step and then back to that D major then you hear it go back to B flat and then all the way up to this and if you put those two guitar parts together, you can hear how they match or line up together, like this. Next up is the song Double Team, which is also from the first album, and it's something like this. starts with this E minor chord and you're kind of hammering on, um, you know, you're barring the seventh fret there, but then hammering on the remainder of that chord. Like that. So it's E minor. Then you're going to slide into this little partial C major. And then right there you're actually going to change C major to C sus4. Add that F note. Right? Like that. Same thing in A right there, move from that C to A and do a similar thing. You know, there's A major and then you're going to play A sus4, add that D note. And then you're going to play G major and then move that up to B major and then loop that progression. And then the change, it kind of turns into a strumming part there. So it's E minor still. And then a crafty uh, C major 7 right there. Just play a C, you know, C5 bar chord. And then the top three strings are all open. And that's C major 7. Move down to, you know, think of an A major bar chord, but then lift up the B and the high E open. And that's an implied A add 9. Down to G major and do the same thing. You know, the B and the high E are open, that's an implied G6. And he kind of strums the chord and then picks the top part. And then move up to B, and that's an implied uh, implied B at 11. Next up is the song Death Star, and this is from Rise of the Phoenix, and this is definitely going to strengthen your awareness and ability playing major 7th chords, and it's something like this. major 7 right here, all dreamy and floating out in outer space. And then you're going to sh uh, shift that up to a G major 7, and you can still hear the low E kind of ringing sometimes, so it's like G major 7 over E. And then go back to that E major 7. major 
major seventh chords. I mean, you could definitely play it this way. I think that's the way Kyle played it. But you could also play that exact same chord right here. It's a little different, you know, arrangement, of course. The, the, the fretted part's right there. But then you're also gonna add that B right there if you play it like that. That's not really what's played, I'm just showing you like another way you can play major 7 chords. You know, it's kind of an unusual or different fingering. That seems really common and familiar. And then you don't really see that one as much. But anyway, E major 7 to G major 7. And you're just going back and forth. And then eventually you hear it move to D major 7. And then down to C major 7. a handful it's F major 7 and you're gonna actually play it like that with the, the thumb wrap so it's you know everything's fretted right there just think of you know an F major bar chord but then the high E is open and that's your major 7 note like that and then whenever you hear the lyrics you know build the death star that's B7 right there sucker for those dreamy major uh, major seventh sounds and chords you know really cool next up is the song robot and this comes from the album post apocalypto and this is really simple it's just two chords back and forth but i'm a sucker for this tonality and the sound it's like this like that and it's just a five string version like this so don't worry about that high E string at all and then you're gonna move to this you know the twist so that's a C minor major 7 right there you know really crafty progression very simple many times on this channel you know great music or memorable emotive music doesn't have to be hard to play that's really simple but as soon as I heard it it just grabbed me and I thought well I've totally got to add that to the lesson because yeah it's just two chords but it grabs you it's so emotional and I don't know it just really kind of just you know, taps into something there really cool stuff <laughs> Now it's time for the part of the lesson that I guarantee a few viewers out there are patiently waiting for me to do this, but I'm actually kind of excited to open and actually demonstrate and use the Pick of Destiny here. And uh, long story short, I actually bought this when it was new, which was 2006, and I had it hanging up in one of my studios, you know, I used to teach in, I think I was in Evansville, Indiana back then, but I had this on the wall, it was popular, my students loved, you know, Tenacious D, so I stuck this on the wall, and then eventually I took it down, put it in a box, completely forgot about it. And honestly, I have a lot of stuff that's in storage, and I was consolidating some stuff that was into a different box, and I spotted this. And I thought, no way, I thought I'd lost it, or somebody had stolen it or something. But when I saw it, I thought, wow, I still have the pick of destiny, and I knew I was going to do this episode, so I kind of you know, took the pick and put it somewhere where I could remember and find it. And now I'm actually going to open it, which I'm pretty excited and a little bit nervous to open this up. All right, here goes nothing. It is officially open. Oh, wow. I always wondered what it felt like because it was just in the, the packaging there. But, uh, interesting. Okay. Let's see what's going on here. Weird. 
He has a weird contact with the string, too. Hmm. Weird. It's actually somewhat comfortable. I mean, you would think this giant, gaudy pick would be really hard to use, but you can actually kind of pick through chords and strum with it, which I'm really surprised for that. because that does, it feels really clunky if you start trying to actually use it. Yeah, that's not fun at all. So definitely it's probably more of a, you know, a showpiece, you know, not really something you actually want to use, like in, you know, a studio or on a stage. But you can actually play with it, which I don't know if I'm, am I chipping the paint off? No, it looks like it's okay. Yeah, I don't know about this thing as far as practical actual use. But I thought it was going to be horrible when I, you know, before I took it out of the package. But that's the first time I've actually used one. And aside from that, I'm not really sure what's going on there. And then also using the horn was kind of cool too. You can actually kind of grab the string with it. I guess from my final grade for the Pick a Destiny review here, I'd give it a C plus, maybe a B minus. I mean, it's not a very practical pick. It's massive. I mean, compared to my normal jazz size picks, that's a mammoth guitar pick. I have no idea what the thickness is. That's like four millimeter or something. That's crazy, you know. But I mean, for what it is, I was kind of surprised. It actually, you know, can function as a pick. Next up is the eternal classic Kilbasa from the first album, and luckily this is a guitar lesson video, because if this was a lyric writing lesson, I'd probably get my channel shut down for the lyrics in this song, but we're just looking at guitar chords here, and Kilbasa's like this. <laughs> Actually starting with this G and uh, it's really unusual because we're gonna grab this B flat with the open D open and then you're gonna bend that B flat to B like that so it has a real sour kind of sound because you're bending the minor third to major like that and I'm actually pulling that bend to the floor instead of pushing up because you also want that open D string in there this partial F, but you're playing the open G, so that's like an implied uh, F sus2 to F major. And then you're going to do the same thing with C right here. And you're going to kind of, you know, basically open up that D string and then hammer on that E note. So it's like a F sus2 to F, and then a C sus2 to C. Like that. And you got that little... And then you start that bend on the G again. F to C move and then stop on that C. So something like this. And then start it again with that G. And you got this little single note kind of uh, a blister in the sun kind of thing. To see again, something like that, you know, classic guitar part, and that's a, you know, definitely a very dirty song, but it's hilarious, you know. How can you not laugh at Kilbasa? Last 
not least is the metal from the Pick of Destiny, and I definitely remember when this came out, I had a ton of guitar students begging for this song. Everybody wanted to learn the metal. Cool riff, like this. <laughs> and it revolves around E and then it shifts up to F too. But that E riff... So, it almost has this still the night, like from White Snake kind of feel, that slippery legato kind of single note riff. So like the first half of that first pass. A little slower. And start it again. Right there you're going to move to F. F power chord. And it's actually signaling uh, E Phrygian because you're going to F and doing... back to E. listen to it because that song is hilarious. All right, that's going to wrap this episode of Chord Play with the Chords of Tenacious D. Definitely a very interesting and hilarious band, but their music's actually very good. You know, I can go back and listen definitely to the first album or the Pick of Destiny or any of their albums, and I can find things I can actually just listen to, you know, aside from the jokes and the crazy antics and stuff. Some of the music's just great, you know, music to listen to and just kind of sit around and enjoy. But uh, there's something about this comedy thing, and... Uh, I don't know what it is. I mean, obviously, I've noticed a lot of rock stars that want to be movie stars, and a lot of movie stars that want to become rock stars. So it is this kind of two-way street. You know, you have Hollywood elite, you know, wanting to front a band. You've got people fronting bands that want to become Hollywood elite. So it is kind of interesting to notice when those worlds combine or they merge. And then you have movies like Pick a Destiny or Spinal Tap or whatever. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, the famous Frank Zappa quote, does humor belong in music? And I personally feel, yes, it does, as long as it's actually funny. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to Late Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content material. Thank you.